In the meantime, the case of Dobie Dennis versus The Bible Speaks heads for a trial next spring in federal bankruptcy court. Attorney Roy Gretman predicts the worst for the church if it loses. If Mrs. Dobie Dennis wants to dismantle this Christian organization out of sheer perversity and spite, or if her father or her husband are so animated, then they will take this church and turn it back into an ice rink or whatever else. Should they prevail, it will be the end of The Bible Speaks. He intimidates you from the pulpit. He says that if you leave the Bible Speaks and you speak uh, anything about the Bible Speaks, meaning speaking anything negative about the Bible Speaks, you'll get cancer of the throat, cancer of the larynx, you will die. Carl Stevens used to say to them all the time, if only I can just find one millionaire. And apparently, he did. How much did you give? Oh, about seven million. I'm Mike Wallace. I'm Morley Safer. I'm Harry Reasoner. I'm Ed Bradley. I'm Diane Sawyer. Those stories and Andy Rooney, tonight on 60 Minutes. Bible Speaks is a fundamentalist Christian church of about 1,000 members with headquarters in Lenox, Massachusetts. Its founder and pastor, Carl Stevens. Many of those who were once devout followers of the church have left, saying that they discovered Carl Stevens is not what he seems to be. Here is Carl Stevens in his own words on what happens to those who question God's man, meaning Stevens. Don't you say a sentence, not a sentence, not a line. Don't presume or you'll die. He intimidates you from the pulpit. He says that if you leave the Bible Speaks and you speak uh, anything about the Bible Speaks, meaning speaking anything negative about the Bible Speaks, you'll get cancer of the throat, cancer of the larynx, you will die. And in another sermon on those who speak against the Bible speaks. I have no right to say they're not spiritual, but if they run down the Bible speaks and tell lies, I have a right to say they're spiritual bastards. How do you like that one? We can only show you photographs of Stevens, like this one from his marriage to his second wife, and home movies, because he refused our request for an interview. When we tried to talk to some of his followers at the headquarters in Lenox, Massachusetts, they told us they were instructed not to talk to CBS. And the lawyer for The Bible Speaks told us we wouldn't be allowed on the grounds in Lenox, a serene campus where some people come to live and some to train as missionaries, home of the Stevens School of the Bible and a church where Stevens preaches. He comes across so spontaneously that it, you think it's right from the throne of God. Someone, Someone like that this? sincerely wants to follow God, a man like Carl Stevens can suck him up in his tailwind so fast. They can't see the, the danger for the dust. Uh, and by the time the dust settles, they're trapped. They've sold their home. They've changed their position. They've given up their job. They've done all these things. Their children are in the school. All their friends are no longer fr from back home. They're here. And you're going to make a rip away from that? You're going to cut loose? I'll tell you, it is a frightening experience. Bruce Brown and his wife Barbara and Pat Manchester are just three of the dozens of ex-members of the Bible Speaks with whom we talked. Many of them told us stories of intimidation and manipulation by Stevens. At one point, we showed up at a service off campus to try to ask Stevens about the things his former followers were saying. He saw our cameras and raced into the auditorium. We weren't allowed to film the sermon, but we listened to it. When Stevens spoke, almost everyone took out a notebook and wrote down what he said. In the early days, he used to tell them, mark it down, mark it down. But today, you still have that. We saw that at a service. Everyone took out notebooks and started yes. writing down. And that's because they think they're writing... Something that comes directly from heaven through Pastor Stevens. James Bjornstad, the academic dean at Northeastern Bible College, who has been studying the Bible speaks for years and believes that it operates much like a cult, gaining control of people because they believe what Stevens says comes from God. Something, according to Bjornstad, Stevens encourages. First of all, you're taught that Stevens is the man of God, and you're told that this is a very unique organization blessed by God. God anoints all the messages of Pastor Stevens. I was guaranteed that angels would come every time I preach. And that's the truth. Stevens, who was once a bakery truck driver, uses the title Dr. Stevens. And he's written to people that he graduated from Moody Bible Institute in Illinois. But after the Moody Institute said he is not a graduate, Stevens claimed his letters were a mistake. 
When I brought that up to Pastor Stevens, he dismissed those letters by saying it was a secretarial error. As for those doctorates, Bjornstad says those are honorary degrees from an unaccredited school. Whatever the story on Stevens' credentials, several former followers said they were taught it's all right to lie for the Bible speaks. And some said that wasn't the only surprise from Pastor Stevens. He was very seductive in my life. You saying what, he made a pass at? Well, he's very affectionate. He hugs and kisses all the girls. And when he takes them in the office, he doesn't limit his hugs and kisses. And I mean, I don't know how far he goes with every woman. I guess every woman would have to say that to you personally. I'm not proud of it. I felt Pat Manchester and her husband were such strong believers in Stevens that they say they gave close to $35,000 to the Bible Speaks. Some of it came from the sale of their home. Bruce Brown says he almost sold his house and gave the money to the Bible Speaks because Stevens urged him to do so. He looked at me and said, Bruce, you still own your house up Maine, don't you? I says, yeah. He said, how much do you think that's worth? I said, well, it's not finished. 25000 Sell it. Just like that. Sell it. How much do you think he cared about the money? I think the worship, the adoration, mm. was more than anything. I really believe it's even more than the money, but I can't absolutely say that. I mean, I know money certainly played a big role because he certainly knew how to get it. This couple that we knew said that right from the beginning, Carl Stevens used to say to them all the time, if only I can just find one millionaire. And apparently, he did. How much did you give? Oh, about seven million. Betsy Dayton Dovidenis, here with her husband Jonas, is one of the heirs to the Dayton department store fortune. She joined the Bible Speaks in 1982, and now she's suing to get her money back. She says she was manipulated through flattery and fear. I was told that God could trust me with uh, so much money because he knew that I wouldn't keep it, that I would give it to the Bible Speaks. How could they do that? How could you not know what you were doing? I think that my desire to find a church made me vulnerable. I had no way of knowing that every little thing they were saying uh, was a lie. It was just lie after lie. And uh, I think there's just no way to, uh, to say strongly enough that they are so good at what they do. The Bible Speaks says Betsy's donations were all voluntary and that she's been brainwashed against the Bible Speaks by her husband Jonas and her family. As proof that she gave of her own free will, they produced a letter, a letter in which Betsy said, No one from the ministry has ever asked me to give a gift. I have never been pressured into giving money in any way. Stevens asked me to write that letter and in fact, uh, he told me what to put in the letter, and the next day, Kathy Hill dictated that letter, and I just wrote down what she told me to write. So they dictated letters to you in which you said you weren't pressured? Yes. Kathy Hill, a loyal follower of Stevens, became Betsy's closest friend. You think she was assigned to watch you? Yes. More than just to watch. To influence me and report back to him? Yes. Mm -hmm. You believe they tried to break up your marriage? Absolutely. They come close? They came very close. <laughs> Jonas Dovidenis uh, objected to his wife's increasing involvement with the Bible Speaks. He says Carl Stevens, in a letter, tried to buy him off in the hope that he would stop interfering. Please don't repeat to her, meaning Betsy, this next suggestion which I gave to her two weeks ago. I suggested that she give you one million dollars to invest in any way you saw fit with her hands off. I took it as a kind of payoff. Well, you know, I've got a million. You, you can have a million, too. I'll talk to Betsy about it. By December 1985, Betsy's last month in the Bible Speaks, she says her fortune was managed by the same lawyer, accountant, and financial advisor who worked for the Bible Speaks. She even wrote a new will, leaving most of her remaining estate to the Bible Speaks, with Kathy Hill as executor. And since the law required that some money go to Jonas, Carl Stevens was put in charge of that money 
in the new will. It was um, dictated by Kathy Hill, and even some of the ideas were made by the Bible Speaks lawyer. What about your children? Did you leave anything to your children? They were totally left out. Betsy says she might never have left the Bible Speaks without the help of her family. And what would Carl Stevens say about all these allegations and his critics? He might dismiss them as he has in the past. They're trying to divide us from each other, but they're not going to do it as long as I'm pastor, because I know how to handle them because I'm God's man. Betsy Dovey Dennis will get her day in court starting on March 30th. Because of her suit, the Bible Speaks has filed for bankruptcy. The trial will be in a federal bankruptcy court, and if Betsy wins, she could force the liquidation of the Bible Speaks.